All right, what we have here is a customer's uh, motherboard that was sent to us. And actually, we can't get the uh, model number off of here, but this is a oldie but goodie. This is a uh, iBook G3. And a few things we can tell about this is, first of all, this was the first true... Uh, you know, reflow, reball errors. These uh, motherboards had quite a few problems. But um, another one we could tell is this is an actual ATI chipset on here. And it has the VRAMs actually built into the chipset. So what we're going to do is uh, reflow this board and um, go from there. Pretty much. Uh, this is going to be same temperatures and uh, same process as the other motherboards. So, uh, for those of you who are asking distance questions, this is pretty much the same distance as uh, previous reflows. Um, keep in mind, uh, exposure time is important. But um, we're just going to reflow this one and then, uh, you know, we'll call it done. This is a pretty straightforward one. A lot of people were shimming them from the bottom. They would take uh, pieces of paper. Uh, they would take other things and apply pressure and flex the board to where the contacts work. But this actually right here uh, is the proper way to fix these. And and like I said at the beginning of the video, this was the original uh, reflow, reball errors that everybody was getting. These were the first ones to actually go out, and they were the first ones to fail. And uh, this one actually lasted a pretty good amount of time. Uh, we're seeing that now. This is, uh, you know, this is a system from what's it say here, 2002. So. We're looking at a, you know, motherboard that lasted nearly 10 years, so that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of time. So we'll replay this one, and then uh, go from there. So as we take this uh, board off the preheater and move it here to the tabletop, what we notice is another thing. This does not have capacitors on the top. So, by actually shimming this system, you could have probably uh, dissipated some heat. Now you have relative uh, components around it that uh, pull voltages, so they could be a problem. But um, all in all, cutting a shim to the size of this and making sure that it fits probably would have actually helped uh, but this system right here uh, the uh, you know the power regulators and everything like that that uh, uh, pull the power through the board uh, not through the board but through the chipset actually um, are not present on that uh, system so there's no heat sinks either uh, other systems that have ATI chipsets and specifically use this uh, mobility Radeon chipset like this, uh, say the DV, I want to say 5000s, I think DV 5000s uh, use the same exact chipset, but they have a silver heat sink on the top. Uh, that would be an aluminum heat sink, and it's actually epoxy directly to the chip. So with this system there wasn't enough clearances to do that but uh, keeping in mind that would be a safe thing for this system since there are no uh, capacitors uh, going on top of this chipset and uh, they won't relatively damage it like that but when we put it back together uh, we're not going to do that